This is your everyday standard mirror mount, right? No, it is not. This actually is fairly different than most mirror mounts. What we've got going on here is actually a dipole mount for 3 8 24 mounted antennas. And I'm gonna put some hamsticks on it. The first thing we're gonna do is connect up some coax here, and we're gonna put a 20 meter hamstick here, and I'm going to use my radial set, and we're gonna do this as a ground spike mounted vertical. Let's get after it. So if you remember from my last couple of videos, I have been using these power poles and my radial system. This is actually the reason why. I started out with this stake mount first, have this power pole set up here so I can put as many I can fit over here and as many as I can fit over here. I'm running four 10 meter radials on this one today and that's gonna help us get this antenna a nice solid ground plane to push against. And I use this with all of my different antennas that are vertical. And then obviously for a dipole, you don't need it because you got the other half of the dipole. How does it actually work? That's the interesting part. This is the, this is the other half of the dipole that we're gonna do in a later video. And then this itself is the one that we're gonna use today. The black part on the bottom, traditionally these are meant to be mounted on your car as you're driving and then you can swap them out for different bands and these things come in all kinds of bands and all kinds of flavors. But there's no reason why you can't use this in a stationary location at your house, wherever you want, because it's a very versatile antenna. What you'll see when you look at it, this black part on the bottom is wrapped with a wire. Hmm, I wonder what that's doing. And then when you get closer to the top, you'll see that the windings get a little tighter. Let's take a look. And so loose windings, tight windings, and then looser windings. At the top of the antenna, you will have this metal whip, which you can use to make the antenna itself resonant. When you get this thing shipped to you in the mail, it's gonna come in two pieces. So the whip goes inside the top section, and then this screws down nice and tight. And then once you get the thing adjusted, you lock down those two screws right there. And it does come with the Allen wrench. What I think I'm going to do is I think I'm gonna go visit a hardware store and switch these things out for at least one thumb screw instead of two Allen wrenches. And when I figure out what size those are, we'll post that in an update. So stay tuned for that. You're gonna to need to have some way to tune this up. So I am going to use my trusty Nano VNA. I'm gonna get this all set up. This is my Nano VNA Tiny SA case. There will be a link up there for you for how this case all works out. I'm gonna need some coax adapters to get me from PL259 to SO239 to SMA male to plug into the Nano VNA. I'm gonna get this thing all calibrated, I'll be right back. So right off the bat, we have a 10 to one SWR as you can see at the top of the Nano VNA here. I'm gonna go adjust the whip. We are now all the way extended on the whip. We are resonant at the bottom end of the band, which means we're actually too long. So I am going to go and shrink it down some more. This time I shrunk it down six inches, so I need to keep shrinking. And after a little bit of adjustment, I've got it at 14,200 and 1.3 to one SWR. That's good enough. So that is how you tune that. Find out where it is resonant and then if it's too low, beyond the bottom of the band, that means your antenna is too long. And if it's resonant above the top of the band, that means your antenna is too short. Take that information and lengthen or shorten the antenna as much as needed to get it to be resonant where you want it to be. These antennas are rated at two to one SWR and 250 watts. I would probably not want to run a two to one SWR antenna at 250 watts, but the wire the, that makes up the antenna can do it your radio might not be happy. So for a situation like this, especially if you were gonna be mobile in your car, where your SWR changes as you're driving the car and depending on whether you're you know, going 70 miles an hour or 50 miles an hour or whatever the case may be, I'd probably have a little tuner in there just to touch it up, just to make sure that the tuner is the one that gets the sacrifice for, I don't know, what's an LDG tuner, under $200? Versus your radio that takes the sacrifice, which is, not $200. That's how I would run this if I was attaching it to a car. We will do that in the future, but right now I wanted to show you a ground mounted vertical. Let's get the radio hooked up and make some contacts. At least they have normal size wasps here. The Yezu FT891 with the Denco nine amp hour special in the lid. There's the 891, there's the power cord, there's the mic. This one has the power pole modification on the back of it. So I'm gonna get this thing set up real quick. It 
Is the frequency in use? Kilo, Mike 9 Golf. Is the frequency in use? KM9G. So we're at about 1.4, 1.5 to 1, just like we saw in the Nano VNA. That's great. Check the SWR on the top side of the band. Kilo, Mike 9 Golf testing. A little under 2, it's not bad. CQ20, CQ20. This is Kilo, Mike 9 Golf, KM9G, calling CQ, 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 CQ20, CQ20. Kilo, Mike 9 Golf, QRZ. <laughs> Hey, that sounds like Chuck. Kilo, Kilo 6, Uniform Sierra Yankee. You are 5'9 into Kentucky. How are you doing, Chuck? CQ20, CQ20. Kilo, Mike 9, Golf. QRZ? Victor Echo 4, Quebec, Zanzibar, you are 5-9 into Kentucky, 5-9 Kentucky, QSL. Roger, Roger, I still haven't got your call, Greg. This is Victor Echo 4, clean paper, you're about a 5-7 here, 5-7 in Manitoba, over. Copy the 5-7 Manitoba, the call sign here is Kilo Mike 9 Golf. The 891 did fantastic on SSB, I made contacts into the Canary Islands, into Panama, into Puerto Rico, and into Texas and uh, into California. The band conditions were a little weird. It seemed like it was going long, going short and up and down a little bit. So I'm gonna try some digital and see how that works out over the next day or two. And we'll get some contacts in the log that way, see which way works better. Digital's easier for making maps for you guys. That's why I like doing digital so much. Howdy everybody, Steve here, KM9G. I decided I was gonna hook up the ICOM 705 and run some FT8 at 10 watts. The 705 without the radials looked pretty darn good and it looked even better when it had the radials. I took a couple of hours, made a couple of contacts, had a lot of fun. I got this contact into the UK, that was fantastic. And then after the UK contact, this is how our map looked at the end. This thing could be heard all over the place. I am very, very impressed with this little hamstick's ability to get out. This is yet again a compromise antenna and it still did the thing, it still worked. There are gonna be some links in the description down below where you can get some more information about the hamstick antenna and the uh, dipole mount that I have. And then I just went and got a regular old nail from the hardware store, a, a big old tent spike, and was able to get that thing into the ground. So in a quick setup situation, no radials, we can get it on the air, you can get it tuned. Add some radials, it gets tuned in even tighter. I like it. Be sure you are subscribed to the channel for some more upcoming videos on the hamstick because I want to try the dipole. So I got the dipole mount and I want to mount it on the car and do some mobile operation and see how well that works out. So there'll be a couple more videos coming out on this antenna for sure. In the meantime, there is a video right up here I think you'll enjoy next. Thanks for being awesome. I'll see you over there.